Hello friends, it's Morella, and today I made a quick get ready with me so that I can talk about where I've been for the past few years. <laughs> as many of you have noticed and reached out to me about, I haven't been as present on YouTube over the past like three years. There's definitely a reason for that. We'll get into it all. And to be honest, this video is a little long because there was so much to get through. So if you feel like I'm not talking fast enough, adjust the settings and um, speed up the playback. I do that a lot for long videos and it's like, you know, helps my brain keep up. So I hope you guys, especially those of you who have been like, I miss your videos, I miss your vlogs, why aren't you on YouTube? Will stick around because I'd love to have this conversation with you and I was really excited to make this today. All right, so let's get started. Where do I even begin? So for those of you who don't know, I started grad school summer of 2020. And you know, at that time we were all in a pandemic. It was hard as a beauty influencer because everything I had known for the past 11, 12 years at that point was changing. YouTube and brand partnerships had been my full-time career for so many years. And brands in that moment were like, we're canceling our affiliate programs. They weren't doing brand deals, of course, because you know, there were so many more important things than the beauty industry at that point in time, which I completely understood, but it also took away my financial security. Not only was there collective uncertainty, but there was individualistic uncertainty as well. And I was experiencing that. I felt like, okay, I have an undergrad degree and I might have to work a completely new job now. So what am I gonna do? <laughs> and I had already been thinking about grad school for maybe eight months at this point. So when the world figuratively stopped, I figured what better time than now? Now, for anyone who has ever been to grad school, you know that takes up so much of your mental energy. And also the content of what I was learning was taking up a lot of my mental energy because you know, as of right now, when I'm making this, I have a master's degree in counseling. And so I'm sure you can imagine how much I was learning at that time and how relevant it was to what we were going through because I was getting a master's education in mental health, basically. I had had maybe a year and a half prior to starting grad school of like, I don't really know if I wanna do this anymore. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe I'm looking for more. I mean, that's kind of like the theme of my life. I'm always like, what's next for Marilla? But I had been questioning it for a while, switching complete gears from beauty industry and everything that's kind of, you know, more superficial in life and just completely different to fully immersing myself in learning about mental health. That was a huge shift of gears. So for most of 2020, I still tried to make it work and I just kind of noticed my heart wasn't fully in it anymore. This is the Laura Mercier concealer, by the way shade 1N. I was still posting regularly, you know, I even got on TikTok in 2020 and just trying to kind of switch platforms. But at the same time, I knew that my heart wasn't fully invested in the beauty industry anymore. And like I said, my financial stability was shaken because, you know, my job was within the beauty slash influencer industry. So there were a lot of personal existential questions going on at that time. I kept dwindling down the amount that I was posting until eventually it was like, no, I'm not really doing it anymore. And a lot of that was also due to protecting myself because I was getting really discouraged. It's not important, I need to figure something else out. And even though I was in grad school, obviously like working towards a different career, that didn't place me into the career immediately. You know, I still had so much to learn. So that's kind of what kept me from posting. I kind of told myself I only want to do it if my heart is in it and it wasn't for a while. And so I just took a step back. And you know, at the time that was really the best thing for me. So I'm glad that I did it. And thankfully, you know, regardless of my own personal financial stability, I had Bradley and my family who were super helpful. And that was kind of, you know, also something that happened a lot during the pandemic, right? We leaned on the people that we were closest to and relationships grew in new ways. So I don't take it as all negative by any means, especially because I've had so many personal life changes. And thankfully I did have a savings. I'm just one of those people that really needs a plan. Are we surprised? I'm a Capricorn son. Of course I want a plan. I want the stability of knowing that like, okay, if what I'm doing right now isn't going to work out long-term, then like, what am I going to do after? So Bradley and I used our savings and mid 2020, we bought a house and that's where I'm filming right now in our home. And we really just immersed ourselves in making it ours. You know, we ripped out everything, put all new flooring, painted all of the walls, put brand new toilets, sinks, cabinets, got all new furniture, hung things on the walls, just really made it super personalized so that, you know, as we were needing to stay home, because this was still 2020, we were going to make sure that it was the homiest. And that was wonderful. That year made us grow so close. And in 21, we ended up getting married. <laughs> also, if you're like, why is there one nail without nail polish? It's because it's glitter and it just popped right off. So much changed during that time. And 
If you're at all into astrology like me, then you might notice that this was all happening during the ages of like 27 to 29 for me, which is an important time in astrology because it's our Saturn return. And this was not intentional by any means, but I think it's so funny that it's pretty textbook that during my Saturn return, which is in Sagittarius, the sign of wisdom and higher education, I got my master's degree. Very interesting. So back to the timeline, 2020, start grad school in June, buy our house in July, fix up the house until October move in in October, adopt Daphne, our only child, in October. And this is all 2020 and then 2021 in April we got married. So 2021 is also when Bradley and I started traveling again and you know we didn't go like too too many places. I think we went to Disneyland once that year. We went to San Diego, we stayed on Coronado Island for our honeymoon at the Hotel Del Coronado and we also went up north to Page, Arizona. Traveling is my life's purpose. Let me never get it twisted. There are two things I feel very strongly about in this life. Number one is traveling. Number two is taking care of animals. And I'm gonna find a way to incorporate those things for the rest of my life. Today's eye look is gonna be so simple, by the way, because I don't think I'm going anywhere. <laughs> I'm just making this video to chat with you guys. So because we started traveling again, that kind of like reignited my spark, you know, cause I was feeling pretty down the year before. And then January of 2022, I actually started working as a counselor or therapist. I use the terms pretty interchangeably, but my official title is licensed associate counselor. So I am licensed. I'm also master's educated. I just like the word therapist a lot, so. But yeah, 2022 was the first year of like actually working my career. So I was still in grad school at the time and I was also working and that means I was slammed. So something had to take a back seat. And because, you know, I had been kind of in and out of beauty influencing for a while, just kind of feeling like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it. My heart's not really in it. That is what took a back seat. And I was like, you know what? If I decide to come back to it, it's still gonna be there. But I fully immersed myself in the art of counseling. I met so many amazing people, both as my clients and my coworkers. I learned so much and no matter what I decide to do for the rest of my life, that experience is going to stay with me forever. It was incredible and even though it was extremely hard and work wasn't as mentally taxing, you would think that the actual like working with clients was hard, but honestly it was just the assignments in grad school. If you guys have been watching me for a long time, some of you have been here since the beginning, you know, like 14 years now. I started in 2009 when I was a junior in high school, then you guys probably know or have heard me talk about the fact that I'm a straight A student and kind of an overachiever and just work really, really hard. And you know what? That didn't stop in graduate school. <laughs> it should have because I've learned my lesson and I've learned my lesson through learning boundaries and teaching others boundaries. It's crazy the things you learn when you're teaching other people. But one of the most important lessons that I've definitely taken with me is that you don't have to give your 100% all the time. Don't do it. <laughs> should this be my lip color? Yes, executive decision is yes. So anyway, did I learn the lesson of don't give your 100% all the time early on in grad school? I shan't lie, I did not. And what that means is I tried my hardest on every single paper I had to write, on every assignment, in my job. I gave it my all and I really fully immersed myself mentally and emotionally. Which also means that no matter what I wanted to dedicate the rest of my energy to, like I had so little left to give. And if you're thinking about going to grad school or, you know, just kind of like weighing out the options of your life, this is one thing I can tell you is don't do it the way that I did. If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, then you've probably seen or heard me say before, you don't have to do things the hard way. And that's not just like a little piece of wisdom that I'm giving that I've heard somewhere. It's literally something that I figured out along the way. And so I want to be able to share that with as many people as I can because I know exactly what it's like to do things the hard way all the time and just heavily push myself for what? <laughs> So like I said, beauty influencing and my social media career generally took quite a backseat in 2022 because I was finishing up my degree and then in December of 2022, I graduated with straight A's. <laughs> and that really wasn't necessary, but it happened. So might as well <laughs> share that. <laughs> and after graduating, I can't even lie, I had to learn how to relax again. It took me months. Every weekend I was just waking up with the expectation of having to do homework, having things on my plate still, things on my to-do list, things to finish. And I was honestly de-stressing from like years of chronic stress. So even though I'm really grateful for my education and got so much out of it, especially a career, it also taught me so much about like chronic stress and balance and just how not to do things pretty much. After I graduated from grad school, I took two weeks off for the holidays. Also Daphne's crunching her lunch in the back and I'm not going to stop her so that's what the sound is. But yeah, 
yeah, then after the new year, I pretty much fully immersed myself right back into work. And I stayed at my initial private practice for two months after I graduated, and then I moved to a new one. And at that point I was licensed, so everything moved really quickly. I got licensed within one week from submitting my paper to them approving it one week. That is the luckiest thing I've ever heard of. If you know anything about the counseling licensure process, even just gathering up everything to submit for licensure is like getting a government job. And the approval process is usually six to 12 weeks. So one week I was like, meant to be. It was crazy. So that all happened really fast. Like December 2022, graduated. January 2023, started back up, didn't really take a break. I regret that I should have taken a much longer break, but you know, still learning boundaries. January 15th, 2023, turned 30. I'm going to try on Mac Teddy 2.0. I've never worn it before. Yep, easy choice. So right after I turned 30, I was still working at my old practice. And then in February, I got licensed within one week. And then I started working at my new practice in February. So starting a new job is really nerve wracking. And despite me being like, oh, I graduated, everything's coming together. Like I'm gonna have so much less stress. Not really, not really because <laughs> any sort of changes and you know, maybe not everyone is like this, but for me personally, like any sort of changes kind of overwhelm me, even if they're good ones. And I would like to be a different kind of person because I don't want to be an overwhelmed kind of person, but I am. <laughs> and the amount of personal work that I've done to try not to be that way. See, this is me being so real with you. Also, this pixie pencil, mm, chef's kiss. Let me just get a little closer for this part. So as I shared many changes, which also led to a little bit of stress, which then leads to not really being able to just pick right back up. So although I had plans like creating content full time again and being really on top of everything, I have to take it slow. I've now been at my new job a little over a month. So the stress from, you know, just that shift has definitely worn off quite a bit. And that's really nice to be able to be like, oh good, I'm feeling a little more relaxed. Like I can start reincorporating things that I really used to like doing before I was chronically stressed. And some of those things include like exercising, reading, working on my artwork. I started making Blythe dolls. Each one takes a ton of time, so it's kind of a slow process, but I have time now. And then of course, creating content. And personally, my favorite part of creating content is connecting with you guys. So frequently I would get comments and messages on Instagram or TikTok, like I miss your YouTube videos. And I know that no one means it maliciously, but it would hurt my feelings. A lot because I'd be like I don't want to not be able to make content for you guys but I'm just so like overloaded <laughs> and so now I'm still like in the process of kind of walking out of that place and doing this once again because I enjoy it and not because I feel obligated because when it's your job you can often feel obligated see this is the issue that whenever I'm trying to get my eyeliner even I'll just keep adding more and so when it comes to work, it's crazy because I have been a therapist now for over a year. I work with primarily women and non-binary clients, but I do have, I think, two clients who prefer he, him pronouns. I also work with primarily young people, ages 13 to about 30. So I specialize in working with teens and young adults. I also work with primarily neurodivergent and LGBTQIA plus clients, although my clients don't have to fit into the criteria by any means. That's just my specialty. And as of right now, I am at a private practice, but you know, I'm very open to where the wind takes me because as I mentioned before, I'm a very what's next kind of person. That makes life exciting to me, like not knowing exactly where I'm going to end up and knowing that there's still room to grow. This mascara is old. <laughs> So for anyone who asks where I've been, what I've been up to, why I haven't posted in so long, or says that they miss me posting, there are your answers. And I don't want to make any promises and say like, oh, okay, I'm now going to post three times a week or anything like that because that has gotten me into personal trouble in the past where I feel like, oh no, now I've placed expectations on myself and I can't meet them. And you know, as I said, Part of learning and growing is not only learning boundaries, but implementing them as well. All I know is I can say that I'm back, I'm posting again, I'm planning on posting on here, on TikTok, for as long as TikTok is in the US. Please, please keep TikTok, I love TikTok. And on Instagram, and if you don't follow me on my other platforms, name is Morella Bell. I wanna change my channel name on here too, but YouTube was like, we're gonna take away your verification if you change your channel name, and I'm like, but can I get re-verified? So I don't really want to make a change until I'm like aware that I can. I also know that in the future I want to implement, you know, talking a little bit about self-care, mental health, more than just beauty because I have this space, you know, this is my platform and you guys always say that you really liked my vlogs. So 
I feel like that's more of the vibe that aligns with who I am today. Now, before we go, I'm going to style my hair and I'm actually gonna make a TikTok on how I do it. So if you guys wanna see that, I will put it in the description. <laughs> All right, friends, hair is done and I'm back and I'm gonna just add a little lip gloss. I feel like the lighting looks different the sun has shifted but so this video was for all of you guys who have been asking me where I've been sticking around regardless of how present I was on social media some of you guys have been here for a really long time and I appreciate it so much so I wanted to share my update and say thank you for always being here and I'd love to still chat with you guys if you have any questions or you know want to say anything to me please leave a comment yeah I don't know I can't think of anything else so thanks for watching <laughs> and I will see you in my next video